those are great, those are touch free. So as soon as you come in, you can sanitize and then you can look around. Um, when you are ready to check out, we have a couple of different Please Wait Here stickers to maintain social distancing. So we can have a couple people waiting online at the same time. And obviously we also have a 20 screen to protect our employees and our staff um, at checkout. We have more hand sanitizer right here. Um, we're going to be uh, getting another automatic pump for that, uh, for that station as well. Um, let's see, when you come through the store, usually most people walk in this direction. Um, come back over here, and then when you come through, everybody to touch everything and you know uh, really get involved with the product obviously that is you know something everyone is being really mindful about now so we have an, another hand sanitizing station over here so, clean. so as you walk through the store you have several opportunities to sanitize your hands so that you can feel comfortable touching everything and experiencing everything and um, also all of our customers are required to wear masks and visitors are required to wear masks. So we're trying to be very vigilant with that and we've had really great compliance. Everyone who's come in um, pretty much has been, um, you know, pretty much compliant. If you do come up, come in and you don't have a mask, we can provide one for you. We have a, a batch of, you know, disposable surgical masks that we are more than happy to hand to you free of charge if um, you would like to come in and you forgot your mask at home or something like that. So it's been working out pretty well. We really encourage everybody to come check us out if you're in the city or if you can get here. Um, but if you can't, I would like to remind everyone that we are also doing um, the virtual shopping option. So if you would like to schedule a private virtual shopping session with me, you can. You can email us at info at the evolutionstore.com or you can call us at 212-343-1114, extension 201, I believe, or 202? 201. 201. Um, and you can make an appointment uh, with us, uh, with either myself or one of our sales associates, and we can um, show you a bunch of uh, stuff that is not on the website. Um, so really, it, it, it's a shame to not be able to come into the store because there are so many new things that we have put out, even just in the past couple of weeks. So um, if you haven't been by um, since we reopened, I really encourage you to either come on down or to uh, make a virtual shopping appointment. And we can show you we have tons of minerals, tons of fossils, new skulls, new you know home decor items, all kinds of new stuff we really encourage you to check out. So in the meantime, this week, um, last week we had talked about three members of the Papillionidae family um, of framed butterflies. Um, as I mentioned last week, we make all of our own uh, butterflies in our fabrication department in upstate New York. Um, so that's one of the main products that we make ourselves. We have tons and tons of variety available. And last week we focused on three different um, butterflies from the Papillionidae family. And um, there was a really good response to that. People seemed really interested in it. Um, we got a lot of orders and um, I think that I wanted to sort of continue with that theme and show you three different members of a different butterfly family, which is called the Nymphalidae family. So I can show you over here. We have uh, set up over here three, um, three different species. So you can see here, so I've matched them also. I think last week I didn't show the natural and the black frame options that we have. So that can definitely, you know, go with your with your personal color scheme. So we have three different butterflies here to show you today, and again, they're all from the Nymphalidae family. We have Simothoe sangaris over here. We have Danaeus plexippus over here, and back here we have Morpho Achilles. And as you can see, they all look really different, um, which I think is you know, part of uh, what's fun about doing these different family collections is that you get to see the, the, the similarities and the differences between all of the different, all of the different kinds. Um, 
I'm going to try and rearrange these so that you can see them all at the same time. All right. Can you see that okay, Mike? Mm -mm, not really. No. <laughs> How should I? Not really. Them? You should just you should just put uh, either the black ones or the natural ones. Okay. All right. I'll try and rearrange these. Then. Um. Let's do this. Let's have. Let's play Django with Let's the frames. Let's play Django with the frames. That's our favorite favorite game. How about that? Is that a thing? Yeah, take this one out. That's fine. Here, I'll put yeah. it over here. Okay, just so you can get a different sense. I wish we had our light to show how I red uh, the Sangaris is. We've really been um, disappointed with not having all of our, our, our fancy camera set up and our lights that we had gotten used to and the audio. You want to put it over there? Maybe you can see a little better, a little brighter back here. So you can see really how bright red that is. Really beautiful. So um, just to tell you a little bit about this family. So as I mentioned, they're the Nymphalidae family, and they're named after the nymphs, which were um, mythological spirits of nature in Greek mythology. I don't know if you guys are into Greek mythology, but I am a super big um, mythology nerd. So I always get really excited about this. And you'll see there is a common theme, totally by accident, but it's really cool nonetheless for a nerd like me. Um, and so the Nymphalidae butterflies are distinguished um, by something that's really interesting happening with their forelegs. So they're called the brush-footed butterflies. And what they've noticed is that these butterflies, all butterflies have, um, have six legs, right? Um, all insects have six legs. And, um, but they only use four of them. So they only perch on four of their legs and the two forelegs, the, the, the ones that are in the front, um, almost appear vestigial at this point. They don't really serve any functional purpose. And they have these little tiny bristles on the end of them that are um, kind of look like brush hairs. And so that's why they're called brush footed butterflies. They think that those bristles might have something to do with communication or smelling of pheromones or something like that, but they don't actually use them to attach to anything. So those are the brush-footed butterflies. Um, and it's also the largest family of butterflies. There are over 6,000 different types of Nymphalidae butterflies. These are obviously only three, but we do have a very, very large variety. So if you're looking for something in that family, we definitely, um, we definitely have you know, hundreds of species, maybe not 6,000, but quite a few. Um, so I want to start off with the Simothoe sangaris over here, so we can get a closer look at those two. Um, so these are called, um, as you can see by their beautiful red color, they're called blood red gliders. Um, and it really is a very vivid, very bloody red color. Um, very beautiful and it's interesting because many butterflies obviously have very intricate patterns and these are almost monochromatic um, there's a few little black dots along the edges of the of their bottom wings but for the most part they're monochromatic so they are very interesting in that sense um, the simbathoe was a, um, a sea nymph um, so you can see um, already that uh, that Greek mythology theme is coming back. Um, and Sangaris obviously means blood, right? So blood red um, sea nymph is I guess her name. So that's pretty cool. And these are only found in, in Africa, um, specifically in the Congolian rainforest um, and, and, and surrounding areas. So the, um, these in particular from the Central African Republic um, and they are very special. So that is the uh, Simothoe sangaris. So that's one of the ones that I wanted to talk to you about today. And then the second one that I wanted to talk to you about may be a little bit more familiar to you, which is the monarch butterfly. So this is one of the most recognizable butterflies um, that we have, um, that most people are pretty familiar with. So it's a very distinctive sort of a tiger stripe pattern very interesting, very intricate, but also not overly colorful, not a bunch of different colors, kind of just more of like a pattern thing. 
going on. And so these are called monarch butterflies. Um, monarch obviously means king. And apparently they were named for Prince William, or King William rather, the third of England, who was known as the Prince of Orange. And so I guess they decided to name this butterfly after him because of its distinctive orange color. And um, another royal uh, link uh, in the name is Danaeus and Plexippus were twins um, who were descendants of Zeus. So another Greek god, uh, uh, Greek mythology link. You can maybe see the theme developing here. And obviously monarch butterflies are known um, for their migrations. So they have really great migratory patterns all throughout North and South America and um, many people obviously recognize them from that. So they're one of the more commonly recognizable butterflies here in North America. So those are the monarchs. And then finally, I wanted to move on to uh, the real showstopper, which is Morpho Achilles over here. And these butterflies are really large, as you can see size-wise. I'd just like to compare the size of Simothoe sangaris and Morpho Achilles, you can see, very different, but in the same family, technically. <laughs> so you can see the huge variation between the two. Um, and can you uh, tilt them for me and uh, yeah. point them towards the light? How does that this way. Work? Can you see the iridescence in the wings? Like that. Can you see? Can... Yeah, so the wings have this really beautiful iridescent quality to them. They're kind of like a teal. Um, almost a greenish blue, uh, very light, like an aqua kind of. Um, and so these are called blue banded morphos. Obviously, you can see um, their distinguishing feature is this striking band of blue um, that goes through their otherwise black wings. So that's very distinctive. Um, and uh, their name also um, comes from Greek mythology. So morpho. Um, is, is a word I think that is derived from Aphrodite, the goddess of love. And also uh, Achilles, Morpho Achilles. Uh, Achilles was, the, was a hero in the Trojan War. So we have three Greek mythological, uh, um, you know, specimens here for you, which was totally by accident. And also if I can show you the back of Morpho Achilles is really striking. Look at that. Look at those beautiful patterns really interesting, very unusual, almost looks like eyes looking at you. There are owl eye butterflies. Um, that may be something that we can talk about in the future. But basically, um, one thing about Nymphalidae as well is that their, the backs of their wings tend to be brown. Um, and that is for camouflage purposes. Um, so that's a distinctive feature. Can you them. arrange the three of them back and front? Sure. So you can see this. So like this, you mean? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And then just uh, so they can get a reference. So. Yeah. So the 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 more the the Danaeus plexippus, the the monarch butterfly, the orange one is the looks pretty similar from front to back but the other ones look very, very different. And um, the Morpho Achilles butterflies are from Peru. So we also have um, you know, three different regions of the world represented, right? We have North America, South America, and Africa. Um, so it just goes to show the immense variation in, um, in this family, which is really beautiful. And um, finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about why I selected this particular combination of butterflies. Um, so my husband Mike and I, who's holding the, the camera, we're actually in the process of moving. We're finding a new apartment and um, it's gotten us really thinking about uh, interior design and home decor. It's an opportunity. Whenever you move to a new place, it's an opportunity to you know, really go nuts and, and, and design your space the way that you want it. And so we've been thinking a lot about, um, about design and color specifically um, because we're trying to figure out what kind of color schemes we want. And so I've been learning more and more about color theory, um, which um, I'm sure many people have seen, like the color wheel, right? With different colors sort of on other, on, you know, the sort of rainbow is represented and there are complementary colors and analogous colors and all of that. And so that's interesting um, 
that's been something that we've been um, learning more about. And so I selected these particular combination of butterflies because it is what they call a split complementary. So a complementary um, combination of colors would be uh, on opposite sides of the color wheel, right? So you would have one color and then the opposite color on the other side. A split complementary is when you have one base color and then instead of going directly uh, opposite it, you go sort of one to the side and one to the other side forming an acute triangle. Um, and what that does is it's a little bit softer on the eyes rather than a sharp complementary, which can be a little bit like, you know, um, a little bit too contrasty. So this is a bit of a softer combination. And so I wanted to suggest this to anyone who's thinking about designing their home is that they consider the color schemes when they're selecting different butterflies. So in this particular grouping, the base color is this beautiful aqua teal color that you see in the um, in the banded morpho in the morpho Achilles so if you see uh, if you had a room that had you know a, a lot of teal or aqua in it um, the uh, the orange and the red um, would be really nice um, complementary colors to that so you could have accents of orange and red and those would go with specifically this beautiful aqua color so I wanted to kind of suggest these as a collection uh, for people who are not only interested in collecting um, butterflies from the same family, these are Nymphalides, you have a great, um, great variation of locations represented, different sizes, different shapes, different color patterns, but at the same time, you're selecting something that's gonna complement your decor. And so I wanted to highlight this particular split complementary selection as something to consider aqua with notes of red and orange. So those work together apparently according to color theory, which I've been learning about. Um, and yeah, so just wanted to suggest those to you for your consideration. Um, you know, if you have a base color in a room that you're working with that you want to find accents for, you can, con you can contact us and if you're not seeing on our website exactly the right shade of whatever that it is that you're looking for, you can let us know. And we have access to hundreds and hundreds of different species, many of which are not on our website. Um, do you wanna give them a little, uh, uh, a look real quick? Um, our butterfly wall, as you can see, um, has just so many different colors uh, for you to choose from. You know, from uh, a blush pink over here to more of a magenta over here. So we have like different types of pink, different shades of red and orange. Um, we have really great neutrals as well. If you're interested more in shape than color, we have whites, um, light yellows, tan, stuff like that. And then of course we have the really big showstoppers up there. This big blue, bright colors and patterns and different shapes and sizes and stuff. Um, we have, you know, like this is kind of like a minty green almost um, down here. Are you seeing that? So that one's really cool and interesting. Um, we can have things that are like almost rainbow colored, have lots of different shades of colors inside of them. Um, that's another really nice, um, almost like a coral color in that butterfly. Um, we have, I'm trying to see what else is a good example. I mean, you have all of these iridescent <laughs> options, which are really, really beautiful. Um, and they definitely, um, definitely are kind of like a wow, wow, wow factor. Um, yeah, so those are, that's our butterfly wall. So you can just see that, and that's only a drop in the bucket of the kind of variation that we have. So, Again, I really encourage everybody to come on down if you if you haven't been back since we reopened, or to take us up on our offer of virtual private shopping, um, where we can show you around. We can go through every single butterfly in the store if that's what you want to try and find the exact one that's going to match that shade of throw pillow that you want to get for your couch. Um, so yeah, we really encourage you to take us up on that. We have so many things that we would love to show you. Um, in the meantime, you know, thanks for all of the positive responses to our last, our last episode about the 
um, the, those three butterflies. Hopefully you will like the new combination of butterflies that I've selected for you today. And maybe next week we will move on to a different type of insect. We'll see. Um, so let us know in the comments if there's anything in particular you would like to see. Um, otherwise, you can always catch replays of these videos on our YouTube channel. So be sure to like and subscribe there as well so you can get notified when new videos get uploaded. So in the meantime, thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next week. Bye.